Thank you, thank you for your contribution. Uh, Senator Lyons. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. So today on Close the Gap Day, just when we thought the Prime Minister had reached rock bottom with his insulting comments about lifestyle choices in relation to homeland communities, he then made the most obnoxious comment to Labor leader Bill Shorten, for which he then made the most lame, insincere withdrawal. But of course we know it is in the nature of the Prime Minister to make insulting comments to women, to crossbenchers and to countless others. And in fact, his lifestyle choice is just a recycled nasty comment. He also some time ago referred to those who find themselves homeless as making a lifestyle choice. He makes these comments deliberately, presumably to connect with his rapidly diminishing base. Australians, however, expect more than this from their Prime Minister. Unfortunately, this Prime Minister has just sunk lower and lower with his insulting, hurtful comments. His lifestyle comments play right into those who think that Aboriginal people are a drain on the national purse and on, the na and on National Close the Gap Day, we continue to hear from Aboriginal organisations across the country that have lost funding under the government's new failed Aboriginal advancement strategy. The government can shout at Labor all it likes, but the facts are that frontline Aboriginal services across this country have lost funding and have had their funding cut by the Abbott government. Today, as a Western Australian, I am proud to say that Perth turned out in its thousands to send a very big, loud and strong message to the Prime Minister and Premier Barnett that homeland communities must not be closed. And West Australians were joined by many other thousands of Australians across this country who also rallied protesting the closure of WA homeland communities. This snap decision to close homeland communities was announced by Colin Barnett without any consultation with those communities. And despite repeated promises and commitments from the Barnett government, there still hasn't been one skerrick of consultation with Aboriginal communities about the future of their homes. The federal government has given WA $90 million to fund services to communities for the next two years, but then what? And you'd think, if you just listened to the Prime Minister and Premier Barnett, that WA was a hopeless case. But of course they're wrong, and they hold this view about homeland communities and Aboriginal people in general because they're ignorant of what is actually happening. Just a few weeks ago, a landmark deal was struck between Lambu Station and Yunga Walla Services. This deal provides security for the station and the Nyungawiri community of around 40 people. Robin Yeda, a Jaru man, the station manager said, by investing in our business, we are investing in our people. This means we'll be able to grow our operation, providing employment and training, and build a better future for our people. Lambu is in the remote Kimberley and the station has been transformed since the early 2000s from a struggling lease with limited infrastructure and poor cattle. Station infrastructure has been substantially improved to the point of Lambu being a viable station. At the end of the sublease deal, the community will be in a strong position to take management of the whole station, good infrastructure, good quality cattle, and good cash flow. This sublease arrangement is a means to an end. It enables the community to invest in itself, its infrastructure and its cattle. This subleasing model could be a model for other Aboriginal rural businesses in WA to learn from and to help achieve their goals. Praise needs to be given to the corporation. Make no mistake. There's no philanthropic movement in the pastoral industry. This is a deal which the Noongawiri Corporation initiated and took time to strike. 
They initiated the deal. Often Aboriginal people take the best deal that's offered to them, not in this case. They considered other offers, other offers five in fact, before making their final decision. The pastoral industry is a tough commercial world. This is a good deal for the corporation and the community. And you would think, Mr Acting Deputy President, this would be something the Prime Minister, the West Australian Premier or even the West Australian Ag Minister would crow about. But there's been absolute silence about this deal, absolute silence. And there's no excuse for this ignorance or silence, as the deal is supported by the Indigenous Landholder Service, which is a partner between the state and the federal governments. It's between the Department of Agriculture and Food in Western Australia and the ILC, the Indigenous Land Corporation. But no, the Premier and the Prime Minister would like to continue on with their slur against Aboriginal people, that somehow we need to help them, that somehow they can't manage and get on uh, making a life for themselves without some kind of white fella input. Well, they are wrong, and Lamu Station is not an isolated in incident. But of course, no media release, nothing. Absolute silence from the West Australian government and the federal government. And it's because their world view of Aboriginal people is they're a drain on the public purse. The, the, Nungawili, the Nungawiri example is one of many examples. On homeland communities, there are countless micro-businesses, tourism, food, and on and on the list goes. But again, if you just listened to Premier Barnett and the Prime Minister, who go on about there being no services and no schools, you would think these community homelands were hopeless. And again, you would be wrong. And that's because Premier Barnett can't even give us a list of which communities he's talking about. He can't be definitive about where the homeland communities are. Ah, he's got no idea and he's taken no interest at all in trying to find out. In fact, he has got a committee that he has set up to look at homeland communities. You'd think in 2015 it might contain uh, some leadership from Aboriginal groups or indeed some Aboriginal people from those, from those community homelands. But no, the committee is made up of bureaucrats within his department who are sitting in judgment right now about homeland communities in Western Australia. Well, it's not good enough, and today I'm proud to say that thousands of Western, Australia's, Western Australians took the time to meet at the State Parliament House and to let Premier Barnett know in no uncertain terms that homeland communities, whilst they may not be valued by the Prime Minister or the Premier are certainly valued by thousands of Western Australians and indeed all the other Australians who on Close the Gap Day took the opportunity to send a very strong uh, message to uh, the Prime Minister and to the Premier that this is not good enough. And again on Close the Gap Day, I report sadly that we have uh, the Noongar Tent Embassy on Harrison Island. The Noongar people are southwest people in Western Australia, and they're protesting homelessness. Uh, many of them don't have homes to go to. And yet, what we will see in Western Australia, with the harsh response from the police and Premier Barnett, is eventually those Noongar people will be removed uh, off Harrison Island. They've already had their, their tents confiscated. And yet, Harrison Island is recognised as a significant Noongar site under the Aboriginal Heritage Act. But of course, in Western Australia, where Aboriginal rights are not really respected, it gives Noongar people no rights to, to occupy Harrison Island. And I'm not quite sure where Premier Barnett think those homeless Noongar people will go. They will go to another park, another car, another relative, and many are the victims of harsh policies that we have in Western Australia. A, an absolute tragedy on Close the Gap Day, and as an Australian, I want us to do much better than what we've been doing. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. Thank you.